chefs, what red flags should people look out for when they go out to eat? It, me realizing the 24 hour diner up the street has every red flag ever, but not caring because they have the best omelets and the best patty melts and I can get both together for under 10 bucks plus the waitress will tell me how much her co-worker sucks so I get a little entertainment too. Comma not a chef but if you see one singular cockroach lurking around, there's probably hundreds or thousands of them hiding in the kitchen. Also dirty menus and corners that aren't dusted are bad signs. Staff arguing with each other is a huge red flag but you gotta admit, it's the best dinner show there is. The first thing they told us in culinary school when you're learning the basic rules for food safety standards is if you enter a seafood restaurant and smell fish, leave. I always say, if you enter a seafood shop or restaurant, it should smell like the ocean, mostly like fresh air and salt water. That means everything ist fresh. If it smells like fish, it starts to become bad and if it starts, it is gonna be bad very fast. If employees try to argue with you about food quality in order to dissuade you from sending something undercooked back, just leave. It means they have a cook who can't take criticism and your chances at getting a sneezer are greatly increased. I agree with most of these tips but man I remember my trip to Malacca, Malaysia. We walked up to a stall where an elderly lady was squatting down just in front of the sidewalk with a plastic basin and washing the dishes in it. Stray cats were coming in from the alley and licking at dishes. My first question was is this a restaurant upon closer inspection? Yes, it is. My second question was who on earth would eat here then our guide brought us inside. Looks like, we are. Food was amazing and delicious and despite fearing the worst, nobody got sick. Pastry chef here. As much as people say avoid specials, I can't speak for everyone but at least in desserts breakfast pastries, if you see something new it's worth trying. Chances are it's something the chef has been working on for weeks on their own time. There's a lot of love and effort put into it. Also, the standby of the menu is a book. It's probably not great. The biggest thing to keep an eye on though imo is the staff. If there's p off people, get out as fast as you can obviously. If everyone is kinda apathetic and not talking to each other much, get out. That's also a crappy environment. Everyone is probably really passive aggressive. And that's going to show. If people seem genuinely good with being there even if it's busy or if there's playful ragging going on, that's where you want to be. The better the staff gets along, the better everything in the place runs. If a restaurant has a one page menu that's usually a pretty good sign. It means their line cooks have become specialists and can usually nail all the dishes listed. Conversely, if a restaurant has a giant, multi page menu that's a gigantic red flag. The longer the menu the better the odds that you're paying to eat a boiled bag frozen meal. Went to a sports bar near Atlantic City. Crap you not the menu was 34 pages long. I just went for the safest thing on the menu. Not a chef. But I just took a chance on a restaurant today and the chefs were sitting. Legs up. Right next to the front door as I walked in. No one but staff and me there. So, according to how my stomach feels, probably that. Who are god. Not a chef but worked in food a lot. Cop it. Yeah it's quieter and doesn't get slick. But it is one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. I saw them pull it up when they remodeled. And put in more carpet. Vacuuming only goes so far in a restaurant and I know they never, ever shampooed it. I clean carpet for a living. And yes restaurants are often disgusting. The stuff we pull out is usually black slime because of grease and grit. Most of the people we clean for try their best to get clean regularly, but even then I find it hard to eat at those restaurants. Cook for a small Mexican restaurant here. I always look for how the staff interact with each other. If they all seem to enjoy being there, and coordinate well. More often than not it's because everything is running smoothly and they have a good system. Which usually means they know what they're doing and you can expect good food. That's how it always is for the smaller family run restaurants I frequent anyway, which I believe always have the best food. I have a family member who's worked in multiple different restaurants, and they always advise me never to get drinks with ice because too many places don't keep their ice machines clean because it's so often overlooked compared to other kitchen equipment. That's 99% of the places that serve ice. Dirty secret is that soda fountains ice dispensers are notorious for being dirty. Not a chef front of the house. 
when my boss, the owner, used to host and people would complain to her about the hour wait on Saturday night at 7pm and then threaten to leave, she would tell them, if the restaurant you choose does not have a wait on a Saturday night, you may not want to eat there, and then turn her biggest crap eating grin on them. Can I add you to the list? Yes. It wasn't uncommon for the place I worked at recently to have a minimum of a 40 minute wait on the weekends and people would try to get all uppity about it. Like you know, you came here for a reason. So did everyone else. Calm down or just leave honestly. There's a Chinese restaurant in my town with a sign out front that says, clean food, and fresh. I still can't help but wonder why they would bring that up unprovoked. In China it's very common for a customer to ask about the freshness of the food, and the boss is usually happy to accommodate and answer truthfully. Just recently my mother went out and asked the boss how fresh was the shrimp and he admitted they're not too fresh and were actually frozen. Recommended the fish or something. All of it totally normal. No one offended. If you order a meal that should take a long time to cook and it comes out very quickly, it's been pre-cooked. Unless you're at a barbecue joint can't exactly make pulled pork in 15 minutes. We have a sushi place me where the chef gives you free samples of future dishes. This usually means they take pride in their work and want to see people's reactions before committing it to the menu. I have one of those places near my house too. Best sushi place ever. I've worked in restaurants for over a decade. A couple years in the kitchen and the rest is fog. If your server's response to how is the item seems disingenuous that's a big red flag we know what goes on in the kitchen we know the complaints and we know which items to stress over when we deliver them servers who pause or seem uncomfortable with that question generally equates to a menu full of stuff we wouldn't eat even as a free shift meal a good sign is when servers hang out and eat at the restaurant post shift generally we are getting a discount but not free food if we are spending our nightly tips on it it's worth it Cook at a fancy casual fine dining restaurant here. If your food is out impossibly fast, it's probably something to be concerned about. I'm talking ordering an entree and it's out in like 10 minutes. This usually means it's already been cooked and they just have to reheat it. Now something like a salad. Okay that shouldn't take any time at all. But you want to make sure your lettuce, or whatever green it is, is still crunchy and fresh. Otherwise it's been made before and has been sitting. Generally speaking, watch the wait staff. If the majority of them seem disgruntled or upset, things probably aren't great. This often translates to the kitchen so they probably don't care about your food if they aren't being treated fairly. Another thing to look out for is the cleanliness of the place. If the restaurant seems dirty or unmaintained, the kitchen is in similar shape most of the time. I've heard people say never order the fish on a Monday or don't get any specials because it's probably product that's about to go bad. But at my restaurant that's not the case. We get orders all throughout the week and our specials are things we are playing around with to see if it could be added to the menu. So I would say just be cautious about that sort of stuff. Also it helps to read reviews. I like to read the 1 star reviews to see why it was rated that way. If a majority of the reviews are for some really stupid crap, and all the other reviews are great, you're likely going to get some kick butt food and service. You all know the ones I'm talking about. Some Karen who left her 1 star review because her water ran out once during a huge crunch or something else totally ridiculous. How does the place actually smell? Does it smell like good food? Then it likely is. Does it smell like perfume or to sterile when these is clearly food on the tables? That could be a bad sign that they are trying to hide something less than pleasant. That's pretty much all I can think of at the moment. I don't really agree with the timing on the entrees. The restaurant I worked at pushed out wonderful steak dishes in 10-15 minutes because they had an efficient system in place, a great line of cooks, and an amazing head chef. Granted, this slowed down during heavy rushes. I recently went to a newish barbecue place. I knew the moment I opened the menu it was going to be awful. The place had at least 120 things on the menu that run the gamut from burgers to lobster thermometer. When you see that, you know it's going to be terrible. It means they're trying to do everything rather than focusing on a smaller range of things and doing it very well. As I suspected, it was terrible. If there is different cuisines on the same menu, it usually means it's not gonna be good. I don't trust that people can do Japanese and Italian in the same kitchen. 
I'm suspicious of Japanese Thai restaurants. I don't know why people think those two cuisines go together. They are totally different. If you walk into a restaurant and hear Gordon Ramsay yelling at the staff you probably want to leave. Unless it's one of Gordon's restaurants of course. Stay away from buffet and salad bars. A lot of the time it is the same stuff that just gets refilled over and over. Super gross. Now that I know, my middle school used to have a salad bar and I rarely ate from there. While it was nice to have a salad bar, it was really gross sometimes they used bare hands to put the food in. This is late but I clean kitchen exhaust systems. If you walk in a restaurant and can smell grease walk out, that means the place isn't clean. From the exhaust system to cooking equipment, we clean some places where grease drips off the hoods onto cooking surfaces. The hood man, y'all are doing the lord's work because that is one dirty job. Waitress here if you see any food coming out that's messy and there's sauce all over the rim of the plate, etc. It's likely to mean that the chefs aren't putting much effort into their meals and they therefore will not be very good. All the chefs at my work find it so important that everything is presented well and I agree. So if they miss something I'll check the plates and point it out which they always appreciate as it reflects well on them. This can also mean Expo isn't doing their job of making plates presentable. My wife trained as a chef and I cooked in fine dining in college. A long menu is a red flag. If they have 40 different entrees, it means that they are preparing a bunch of frozen ingredients or they have the exact same entree rebranded as a different dish based on the sauce. Short menus tend to mean fresher ingredients. In culinary school currently and every single chef instructor says the same thing. If it's misspelled on the menu it's on purpose and it's so they don't have to sell you the real thing a prime example is crab cakes. Please god be clever about ordering. If the place is grubby, such as table not cleaned, staff are just sat down in the restaurant. You hear insane shouting from the kitchen etc don't order crap like lobster. I've worked in the industry for 10 years and a year ago went to Spain with my boyfriend's family. They all decided on a restaurant they wanted to go to. The restaurant was in a busy area but was quiet. Red flag 1. The menus were dirty as were the cutlery already laid out on the table. Red flag 2 and yeah I asked for replacement cutlery. Though there were more waiters than customers and most were sat down one was drinking at a bar. Red flag 3. There was about 50 dishes on the menu. Red flag 4. And I saw flies all over. Red flag 5. I ordered a vegetarian salad because I didn't trust meat from there at all and told my boyfriend he should do the same. He didn't listen. Nor did the rest of his family. They all decided to go for chicken or seafood. They spent the next two days vomiting. I enjoyed the next two days in the sun. You'd think you'd leave before seeing all of those five blatantly obvious warning signs. Or even leave after seeing that fifth one. JFC. If I saw all that I'd be out of there. If I saw even two of those I'd be out. I've done bartending waitressing for a few years. Here's my list. First of all, ignore the bathroom's kitchen thing. The people in charge of the kitchen generally aren't in charge of the bathrooms. And it's normally the server's job. If the restaurant area is busy we're gonna skip that when we can. But we'll probably give it a quick tidy if we use the toilets. Most places opt for paper menus. Because they can just be chucked away afterwards. It's cleaner this way. However if the table is sticky. And the restaurant area is quiet. Then there's probably a few other sticky areas. Check your cutlery. Most cutlery barely gets washed. It gets rubbed with soap. Sprayed with water and chucked in a dishwasher. It's then meant to be polished with hot water when it's brought to the table setup area. This is where we actually check it for leftover grime. If your cutlery is gross, chances are your wait staff aren't doing their job properly. Don't order fish on Sundays. Most places get their fish deliveries on a Monday and on a Thursday. Fish goes off fairly quickly and on a Sunday it's really not great. If your server has long hair and it's not tied up check for hair in your food. Kitchens tend to have really strict rules on their staff and you rarely see them with hair down and makeup on. If there's a hair in your food it's probably from your waitress. If you're hot, food is out quickly your chef was probably a microwave. If your server visibly has a cold and is still working, don't eat there. They are either not paying their staff enough to have days off or they're forcing staff to work in conditions where they shouldn't be handling food. The kitchen staff probably get the same treatment and probably have the same illness. 
This isn't so much about sanitary red flags like most of these, but more about saving you money. If you're going to get sushi rolls, make sure you read the ingredients. A lot of places have what amounts to a California roll for a premium price. I've told this story before, but it is the best example of what I mean. I worked at a Japanese restaurant for a while and we had this thing called a volcano roll and it cost $7.25. A California roll there cost $3.75. The volcano roll was a Cali roll cut into the shape of a triangle and topped with spicy mayo that has been heated up with about $10 worth of fish. Literally just a few bits that was not worth it. You are much better off ordering a Cali roll and paying $50 extra for spicy mayo on the side and asking them to heat it up. I had one guy come in with a girl and he ordered a couple of regular rolls like spicy tuna and yellowtail, along with a volcano roll. When served in the restaurant, unless they ask us, we would put the sauce on top so it looked nice, like a volcano. When I brought that roll over he was like, oh, I didn't know you guys put the sauce on. I've only gotten it for pickup and the sauce is always on the side. I don't really like it, could you bring me one one without it? I tried not to laugh and said sure. I went back and the sushi chef asked what was wrong. I told him that he didn't like the sauce and wanted one without it. He laughed and said alright, so he took a Cali roll, cut it up, and put it on the plate. I brought it back to the guy and he was super pumped. Basically this guy paid $7.25 for a roll that would have cost him $3.75 and me and the sushi chef got to split a free volcano roll. Normally I would have just told him about it, but the dude was being so arrogant the entire time. I'm guessing to act like he was a sushi expert to impress the girl he was with. I've seen this at a couple of other places too where they slightly dress up a California roll and jack up the price. You don't want to end up like that guy just because you didn't take a few seconds to go over the ingredients. I remember reading this. Sounds like a good sushi roll tbh. Obligatory not a chef. My grandfather was a long haul trucker, and always told me on road trips to look for the places truckers congregate. They all talk to each other and will find the best places along the highways. It's worked out for me so far. My brother told me it was because I had a large enough parking lot to manage a big truck. Not a chef. More of a foodie. That's what we call fat guys that eat out a lot now. General restaurant condition. If the paint is peeling off the walls, the furniture is all torn up, the place is not cleaned well, etc the food is probably going to be equally crap. If there are too many items on the menu, if you have 50 combo choices, man you know half that stuff is frozen, old, canned etc. Nothing is gonna be great like an in and out burger, it's all gonna be meh. That's pretty much been the first change Ramsey will make when trying to fix a restaurant, is cutting the menu in half, quality over quantity. Check your dishes, cups, cutlery, mood of staff, if it has an open kitchen it's probably half decent. Cleanliness of place, clutter, etc. If your plate is hot it doesn't mean your food was microwaved. Every restaurant I've worked in has kept their plates in a warming drawer or oven to keep them hot. One thing I haven't seen mentioned yet, the amount of Serve Safe certificates posted on their wall. Serve Safe is a national food safety training course that all managers have to take and pass to become managers. It is required in all food service establishments and for every Serve Safe certified employee, there should be a certificate visible to customers, similarly to health inspection. So basically, the more certificates you see, the more employees that work there who truly understand food safety. It's an incredibly tough test and you have to actually understand the material in order to pass. The test really isn't all that hard. Chef here. An easy red flag is an oversized menu or a menu that goes out of the restaurant's theme. If the menu is the size of a short novel it's very likely your food is going to be subpar. Staff demeanor can be a big one but is hard to judge if you can't see the cook's chef. It's not uncommon for places to have lazy servers with a poor attitude but the cook's still rocking it. If you do see the cook though and their demeanor is poor they aren't going to care how your food comes out. Not a chef but if you see one singular cockroach lurking around, there's probably hundreds or thousands of them hiding in the kitchen. Also dirty menus and corners that aren't dusted are bad signs. I look for dust. 
dust on the ceiling tiles or in the air conditioning vents. I also have a habit of running my finger along chair frames after I sit down to check for dust. Not a chef but one that makes me keep driving past is a sign saying under new management or something similar. It means the business has already failed. At least, once and either a new owner has come in thinking they'll be able to cut corners better than the last owner. Or it's the same owner trying to save face by saying someone new is in charge when there isn't. Steer clear of these places. Not a chef but from personal experience, if it's a small Chinese restaurant and they have a tank holding live seafood, but they don't clean it, that place is definitely going to give you a brutal case of food poisoning. If you insist upon eating at such a place I suggest you tip heavily, if ordering to go, or heavily flattering the waitstaff and or asking about what's fresh, if dining in. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, Check another video. Bye for now.